Hello. In this tutorial, we're going to have a quick look at box and geometry morphing in Grasshopper and Rhino. This is a really quick and easy technique that produces excellent results, especially if you've got the time to play around with it a bit longer. Okay guys, starting as we normally do, got a fresh uh, Grasshopper document as well as the provided building to work with. First step for uh, doing a box morphing is we need the uh, surface to morph against. So save the time, I'm just going to set that one up in Rhino. One curve. I mean, if you were doing this and your employer or lecturer gave you a bit more time, you'd put a bit more thought into where these curves came from, maybe a bit of analysis and uh, had a bit more response to place. But for the sake of this tutorial, this is a pretty quick concept. Uh, geometry morphing in Grasshopper is really simple and a great tool to have in your parametric design arsenal, if you ask me. We'll loft these three curves together in Rhino. One, two, Three, hit enter, perfect. Right click and put that onto our correct layer. Delete the curves, we don't need them anymore. We might want to change it, but for the sake of this tutorial, we'll be fine. So now that we've got our surface for our sun shading, jump back into Grasshopper, grab a surface uh, component, from geometry tab under parameters, right click, set one surface, select the surface and we can hide that layer. Turn on our grasshopper preview so that we can see it in Rhino. First step is to divide the domain of our surface under math domain. We can grab our div divide domain component, our surface is our main and then the UV. So UV, numeric inputs. We'll just do two number sliders. We'll change them later. Next step is to set up our surface box for generating the surface that goes along the, uh, the boxes that go along the surface. So under transform, if I find it, surface box, we use our initial surface as our base and then our newly created domain and the height is the distance that we're going to be extruding off the original surface. So we want to make this nice and bulky I think, so start with 400. You already see a problem there is that we're going backwards. So that, well not really backwards, but it just means that the normal of the surface is pointing that way. The quickest way to flip a normal is select your original surface, just type in flip. Now the normal is coming out towards the our viewport here. So it makes a bit more sense. And that is ugly. That's... Let's see if we can. That initial curve, it's a bit too shallow. Let's see if we can make that look a little bit nicer. Hit F10, turn on points. So for point. And as you can see, if we edit it in Rhino, of course, because we're working parametrically, it's, this surface is referenced in Grasshopper and updates live, which of course is one of the great benefits of designing this way. I mean, that looks right. We might just move the hole across a little bit. So it's somewhat centered. All right, turn that layer off. Now oh, that's bit boring but our boss has only given us a short while to do this so that'll do for now. 
Next is to set up the geometry that we're going to morph into each of these domains on our surface. So that will just minimize Grasshopper, jump back into Rhino, and very quickly, just going to jump in the top view. Create a box. Now, of course, this doesn't have to be perfect because Grasshopper is going to morph whatever geometry we create to squeeze inside of this box. So this doesn't have to be to any set uh, dimensions or anything to work. But of course, you know, if you had a bit more time, if you're um, doing this for a client that gave you a bit more time or uh, a school assignment or whatnot, um, you'd probably spend the time to come up with uh, your response, whether that to be place or the brief or um, even just, you know, aesthetically. But for the sake of this tutorial, this is just to get your head around simple box morph. In other words, I don't really care, you'll figure it out. All right, let's boolean them apart, subtract from. All right, now just to give it a bit of definition, just select that, zoom, selected. And when you do that, you see your camera starts rotating about what you just zoomed in on, which is a great trick if you didn't know it already in Rhino. Um, just to give it a bit of definition, we might champ for a couple of the corners. Nice. So when we morph it, we might be, we should be able to see a bit of definition. We want to get rid of our little overhanging pieces there. So select cutting off objects. Hit enter. Trim that. Trim that. Done. Right click to do the last command again. Cutting object. Get rid of our little dangly bits. Now that has, if you select again, you'll see that it's this has left the um, surface group. So it's become an element on its own. Just to keep this clean and tidy, just select all that. And type in join, and then it becomes one mesh again. Perfect, so that's ready to reference into Grasshopper. Just put that on the box layer so we've got track of it. Uh, let's maximize Grasshopper. Under parameters, we're going to grab our geometry component, right click, set one geometry, select our the box will turn off the layer so we can see our reference geometry. Okay, now we need to get this to be referenced into each of these individual boxes, bounding boxes. So first we're going to generate our bounding box of our shape. So surface and the primitive, we're going to grab bounding, put our geometry in that. And finally, all we need is our box morph, which is what this entire tutorial is meant to be about. Which of course is, I'm in the wrong bloody tab, it's under transform, not surface. The ge geometry we are morphing is the one that we just referenced. Our bounding box is our reference boxes and the domains are our surface boxes. What is that? Target boxes. We move up. Oh, that's definitely something. Um, let's just... Can't say I love it. I'll just bring this one up a little bit. Yep, 
you see the more detail you've got going through your Rhino script, the longer it takes to update. Now, my computer's far from the slowest computer, but even when you start working with things like this, you'll start, start to see a bit of slowdown in your performance, but that's fine. Aces is still a lot faster than doing it the old fashioned way. Which, you know, a change like that, if you're doing it in a traditional CAD pattern, it would mean you'd have to update everything. Okay, so I still don't like that. That looks a bit. Yeah, it looks a bit better. All right, so we've got our sun shading. Turn that off. Turn that off. And actually, we'll just bake this into our Rhino so we can have a look. We'll turn off our Grasshopper preview. Turn off our sail layer. There's our parametric sun shading using uh, geometry morphing. That's pretty. That is. That's pretty. Something to look at. Meet the budget. In the brief, let's just have a quick play. No, no, mm. so take away a few elements, give it a bit of character. Sort of make it look almost a bit like old school Tetris or sort of, you know, the chunkiness is almost 1970s or 80s sort of aesthetic. The nice big chunky chamfers and everything. And there you go. There is the simple script for a box and geometry morphing in Grasshopper. Hope you guys found this helpful. And uh, stay tuned for my next tutorial. Cheers.